Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've got some pretty exciting news about what's going to happen with Coinbase and the IPO listing. I'm going to tell you exactly when that's going to happen and what could potentially happen with the crypto digital asset space. But I will just tell you this, don't hold your breath for a rocket ship. So on top of that, we're going to take a look at a new piece of information that Binance is now going to be listing stocks. And the first one they will be doing is Tesla. So again, it's another example of Binance taking the lead. And then two stories I want to cover real quick, and that is that uh, there's been a drastic reduction in the spam count in our comments section. I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. And if you are a YouTuber, just contact me so I can tell you so we can wipe out these spammers. And finally, there's some good information about what is going to happen as far as the deadline for taxes for America. And this little piece of information just came out and said, hey, you might owe some taxes right now on April 15th. So we'll take a look at what's going on in those two or four articles. But first, I look what's going on in the market. So today it is the 12th of April. It is 1030 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we are doing great in our market cap as far as being over $2 trillion. So $2 trillion, the hottest uh, assets right now on Twitter are Binance Coin, ARR, I don't know what that is, Solana, KCX, KCS, DAI, HTX, HV, and FTT, our FTX token. So just so you know, this is Trade the Chain. You can find a link in the description below. It's all about sentiment analysis and what is actually happening happening with the market as far as news stories. So just real quick, let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So Bitcoin, uh, everything's pretty much up for the day. And Binance Coin is a big winner uh, over the last 24 hours, up 17% probably because what's going on with that listing with as far as like listing stocks. And um, yeah, they really did a great thing. So that's pretty good. ETH's down a little bit. Bitcoin's up a little bit. XRP's still, I mean, 81% for the week. Watch out. It's pretty good. Tether, nobody cares. Cardano is up a little bit. Polkadot, Uniswap. Wow, Uniswap 21%. That's pretty good. Usually because that uh, version three is uh, coming out or is out. So yeah, a lot of great things that are, that are happening. But just look at Binance coin. And when you're sitting at home looking at what to invest in, Take a look at what is actually has a utility right now. Not what it says it's going to do, but what it's doing right now. Binance Coin is really doing those things. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, a store of value. I think we can all agree there. Uh, Ethereum, you can build a lot of things on Ethereum. And uh, of course, it's great for the swap. Not great for the price, but hopefully they figure that out. And Binance Coin, and that's why you got one, two, and three. So that's how I see it. Anyhow, let's jump into uh, today's top story. But real quick, let me do the projected range real quick and see if you're a trader out there look at trade the chain because the next hour this is with 90 percent assurance you got a five it's going to go up five percent uh what is this rari governance coin i don't know what that is haven protocol stacks red coin binance coin beam trust swap like sushi all these things that i really don't deal with so if you're a trader uh, check out trade the chain link in the description 14 day trial all that good stuff all right so let's jump into today's top story so the Coinbase IPO, everybody's talking about it. It's going to be great. Uh, they think that uh, on that day, everything will blow up, slow down. It doesn't usually work like that. Um, just because you have an IPO, people who are in this IPO or you know, who got early access, sure, they're going to make a boatload of money. And the people, once it gets listed and they can, they can buy it, yeah, I mean, it could go, IPOs, it could go to the moon, it could it could just be stagnant, uh, it probably goes up a little bit, but, you know, it'll fluctuate. And that's great for, like, traditional people who are, like, in the, in the stock market. Maybe you yourself will get into it. I don't think I'm going to buy Coinbase stock. I just, I mean, it'll probably do great. I just... Uh, doesn't really do much for me. I think I'll put into something else that will appreciate a little faster. Again, it could appreciate tons. I don't know. But uh, remember that this really, to me, what it means to me is like a stamp of approval. Like, hey, here's your, here's your exchange and uh, it's all cryptocurrency assets. And this will kind of just lead all these people who are like naysayers, not just naysayers, but people like, I don't really know about this stuff, just to go, you know what? There's a publicly traded company besides Voyager, uh, which is an exchange, Voyager is a brokerage, that uh, has actually been listed and it has a high valuation and a lot of smart money is getting into it. Maybe I should look into that. Maybe it's not just for drug smugglers and all that stuff that they talked to me about. Anyhow, so just so you know, this will happen April 14th in two days, two days, wow. And again, the big thing is traditional finance. When 
when they see this happening, I think a lot of money is going to start to dump into cryptos and digital assets. But this is just the IPO. Once this goes through, I think potentially an ETF can actually go, go actually happen. I'm going to tell you exactly why and some other pitfalls. So just so you know, Coinbase itself has 56 million verified users. That's verified users overall. Monthly users, it's like 6 million. And we, we uh, covered this in a story about a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, so 6 million monthly users, that's pretty great. 36 million verified users, that's fantastic. But they've been around for a long time. So I could see that actually happening. And uh, they talked about how the value could be anywhere from 50 billion to $100 billion for Coinbase. Wow. Brian Armstrong is going to make a lot of money. By contrast, just to give a comparison, Intercontinental Exchange or ICE, which runs a New York Stock Exchange, has a market cap of 65 billion. NASDAQ has a market cap of 25 billion. And here comes little old Coinbase. Hey, we're at 100 billion. Sorry, new kid on the block. And that's how it goes. That kind of valuation is getting the investment community, particularly the exchange traded fund or ETF community, very excited. So first of all, uh, a couple of things. And that is that um, I think if we take a look at, this is just, what everything is compared to the world's money and markets and what it all is. If you scroll down, and I'll link this in the in the comment section or in the description. So stock markets, you got $89.5 trillion that is just kind of sloshing around there. And then money and global real estate at 270, how much is it? 280 trillion. Wealth is a ton. And then derivatives, you know, futures and that type of thing, like almost a quadrillion or at least 500 trillion. So when we talk about this, these traditional money players, this is where all the money's at. This is where it all is. And this is where we have to extract that money from them doing goofy things, not financial advice, that they can get into our market. And so when we talk about like our cap of $2 trillion, remember one year ago, we were at like $200 billion during March of 2020. And now, I mean, that just sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Two, I mean, $2 trillion, you're like, eh, that's how it should be. So if we take a look at all the money that's sloshing around out there, a lot of different factors, I think that these types of things are good stories to bring people out. I don't care who gets into it. I just want people into it so they can actually bring all these funds in there. Now, if they want to keep playing in those markets and do Forex trading, all that crazy stuff where they get a 0.05% per day, have fun. But uh, it sounds awful to me. So again, I think it's gonna be great. And this is all about uh, really transitioning from the IPO to the ETF market. So uh, this talks about other tech ETFs, particularly Kathy Wood's ARK FinTech Innovation, as well as Global X FinTech ETF Finex will also be likely buyers. And that's just the beginning. We will see many more ETF firms filing for crypto type funds. So there's two things. ETF type, I mean, ETF type funds or hedge funds, sure, they can get into it and they can put it in a basket, whatever else. But if we take a look like, like an ETF, like a traditional ETF, that's going to be hopefully coming through this year. I've talked about this in the channel. I don't, I never really thought it could actually happen, but with things that are going on and the institutions really getting into it, then you got Ginsler, who's going to be uh, hopefully confirmed very soon, who taught blockchain and cryptocurrency at MIT. I think this could be, uh, you know, it could actually happen, which would be fantastic. And then to me, I'm like, who cares about an ETF, right? Because I always make the mistake of everybody's like me, I'm like, well, everybody just go down, just go down to Voyager or go down to Gemini or go down to Coinbase and just pick yourself up some Bitcoin. You know, you don't have to be an accredited investor. Just put 25 bucks in dollar cost average. What's the problem? And I didn't really get it until I talked to a couple of friends, Alex Mascioli and Ryan Gorman over at Trade the Chain. And I listened to also an article or it was, um, I think it was Pompliano's podcast. And he had Kevin O'Leary from uh, Shark Tank. And he was talking about how like, look, you don't understand it. If I could just have an ETF and then I could roll my, you know, millions of dollars in there, I'm not everything, right? But, you know, a couple, just a paltry couple million dollars. And I could put that into an ETF. That'd be great because he was like, it doesn't make any sense for me to go to an exchange where I don't, it doesn't really physically exist. And then I have to like, you know, just, you know, they're going to custody it maybe, or I'm going to put it on like a, a, a little device like this. This is going to be a couple million dollars. You out of your mind. And we're like, yeah, that's exactly how it is. So for him and the rest of the people like him, that doesn't compute. They need an old style ETF. So where someone else can just do all the work for them, they just dump money in and go, 
make me some more money. And that's what rich people do. Here's a bunch of money, make me more money. And an ETF is what they're used to. So let's just give them what they're used to. It's just like every other business out there. You have a customer, this customer wants this thing, you give them that thing and they do the thing that you want them to do. It's so simple. I don't see why, I don't see why businesses just don't do that. So with this ETF, again, like the little graph we just took, took a look at, there's a lot of money sloshing around there. And if we can just get an ETF, then a lot of more people are like, all right, I'll get into it. Now, the smarter ones, the earlier adapters, they're already here, but I think there's a lot of people on the sidelines just waiting. That's how I see it. Anyhow, so that was the, the good part, right? Here's a couple, couple things that I think you should know. First of all, ETF solves a lot of problems we just talked about. It's like a stamp of approval, all we were talked about too. This was interesting. The gold, the gold ETF changed the world when it came out in 2004. It made it easy to own gold as an asset class. And I was like, really? It, couldn't you just pick up some gold bullion at like Circle K or something like that? Apparently not. Apparently it's very tough. And uh, 2004, I'm like, well, what did that ETF do for gold? Interesting enough, uh, here's a nice little uh, chart of like 30 years. So really 1972, 40 years, I guess. Wow, I'm getting old. And then, uh, you know, here, you know, Nixon took us off the gold standard and kind of went up. People could get it. And then in 2004, right around here, I don't know, around Let's see, Jan, around here, May 12, 2004, somewhere around there, right? This is when that ETF was launched. I don't know the exact date, but if you take a look at 2004, look at 2005, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, 10, 11, 12, then there's a drop off, and then here we are back again. So again, ETF really did do that, you know, and I'm sure gold bugs were like, what's the problem? You can just go down to wherever and get yourself a gold bullion. I don't see the problem. And it's the same thing with me. I'm like, what's the problem? Just go down to you know your local exchange, sign up. It's online. Use your phone and put it in there. People aren't used to that. Give them an ETF. That's it. So I will say this though. God, those gold bugs. I own gold and silver, just so you know. But when I see stuff like this, I'm like, wow. Went up from $1,500 in 2012 almost to 2000 in 2020. What a huge deal, right? Anyhow, um, I'm not going to get rich off gold, just a hedge. And I hate the people who are always talk about like, you got to own gold because, you know, economic collapse right on the corner and uh, Mad Max, Thunderdome and e EMPs. Sure. Anyhow, I own gold, but get real. So going on several weeks ago, and this is, this is kind of like the negative part of it, right? So we want an ETF. The IPO is going to do well. Several weeks ago, the SEC acknowledged the receipt of VanEck's Bitcoin ETF application, which set in motion a 45-day regulatory review period. Great. At the end of the period, the SEC must approve, deny, or punt, or like just go out uh, for another 240 days. And then uh, what most people believe is that even though it's, you know, you've got Fidelity, and they're trying to get their ETF. Uh, you got VanEck, which were big traditional players in gold, and now they're into Bitcoin. They're just going to punt it down the road, and 240 days, then they'll just probably, they might deny, they might approve. Hopefully, they approve. Again, we got Gensler in there, so who knows? But um, the thing is, we've been waiting this for a long time, and I remember there's been videos about this before, and it never happens, but I think we're close, and here's a couple reasons why. A few years ago, there was no regulated futures market. Now there is, and the volumes are pretty darn high. There was also no regulated custodians with insurance. I think that's big because the SEC's job is to make sure that people are protected, uh, whatever you want to say to that. Um, and now there is custodians with insurance. So again, I think we're on the right track. Maybe this actually happens. And if it does actually happen, I know some people think it's not going to be a big deal. I kind of think it will because of what we just talked about with all this trillions of dollars just sloshing around and it could be enormous. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. But lastly, I will just say this. If you think everything's going to happen on April 14th when the IPO comes about and everyone's like, give me Bitcoin and give me Cardano and give me Tron and give me Tomato Coin, it's not going to happen. It's just like marketing. You got to see it a lot of times before you actually buy it. But this gives us legitimacy. And that's why I think that 2021, towards the end of the year, we're going to see fireworks. Let me understand the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. Ah, real quick. Binance is pretty awesome. Let's be honest. I wish I could have gotten in a Binance coin. Uh, I'm in America. I can't do it. You got Binance US. I'm in Texas. You can't do that either. So, I mean, there, maybe it's changed. I'm not for sure. But uh, I remember when I tried to get Binance US, like, sorry, Texan, you're not going nowhere, which is why I'm probably going to move to Puerto Rico. 
Anyhow, so this was something that uh, Voyager was talking about doing, about uh, you know going crypto to stocks. And I thought it was fantastic. And then all of a sudden I see this, I'm like, damn, they, ra they lapped them already. So Binance is going to offer up digital tokens that represent fully backed shares of equity stock. And they're going to do Tesla to start it off. And to me, like... I know there's there's slight differences in uh, in you know actually owning the stock and then the digital tokens of the stock, but uh, if you're trying if you're trying to make money, I don't see the 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 big thing, right? So of course people in the comments will tell me what a moron I am and that I this is, doesn't really make sense, but to me, if you're going from crypto and you can own a Tesla stock or you can own an Airbnb stock or a Mara stock or a Riot stock and you don't want to deal with uh, you know what was it, Robin Hood and all the shenanigans that they do? Sure, why not? Let's make some money. So I think it's it's pretty good. So again, if you're looking at what your token does, take a look at what it does right now. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last two pieces, just so you know, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> not really, but uh, I try to do the things I say I'm gonna do. Like we used to do scam of the day. And now what I try to do is like clean up all the scammers. I had my assistant and she would go through and wipe some things out. It was just ridiculous because they would just come back and put more in. So somebody contacted me, a company contacted me and go, look, we want to help clean this up. And this is just ridiculous. I go, sure, let's, let's give it a shot. And like the first couple uh, weeks worked out pretty great. It was like 70% reduction. I go, you guys got to tweak it and make it even better. And they did, and now we got a 99, 90 to about 95% reduction in spam comments in our in our comment section. Because here's the thing, YouTube ain't gonna do it, so it's up to us. So I was like, well, let's do it. And we did it, works out pretty well. Uh, if you look at my comment section as, as compared to like other comment sections in other YouTube videos, you'll see it's pretty clean. It's not perfect, it can't be perfect. It's very hard to do that. But uh, I think we might be able to get to near perfection as time goes on. So this is just my commitment to you because I don't want you to go through all the scams and I want you to be screwed over. And on top of that, I don't want you to have to like go through all these spammy, crappy comments all the time. Just be like, oh, call my WhatsApp, blah, blah, blah. It's stupid. So if I can do that, great. If you are a YouTuber, reach out to me directly at Dan Digital Asset News with an S at gmail.com. Or for all you guys who already DM me, just DM me. Uh, I've already got you my, my DMs. Oh, one more thing. If I, don't con uh, if I don't reply to your DM in Twitter, I get like 100 DMs a day. And uh, I, it's very tough. So uh, I, the best I can do is, is get to you at some point. Sorry. And then uh, last thing is, so that's the comment section. But there's also scammers. I don't know how the hell they did this, but there's somebody from with the uh, Gmail of Dan Digital Asset New without the S. Uh, Dan Digital Asset New at gmail.com. And that is not my email. My, my email is Dan Digital Asset News with an S at Gmail. So I need you to do me a favor. If you get something from this piece of trash, could you take that email and every email account that I know of, there's like a spam folder or you can label it as spam. Label it as a spam because he has he's on the Gmail domain. If you label it as spam enough, a lot enough people do that, then he will get his email banned or taken away or reduced or something. So please do that so I don't have people going, hey, you scam me. That always sucks. And let's not scam people. So uh, please, that'd be great. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. And again, if you're a YouTuber, uh, reach out to me. I'll give you the information for this new company and I'll give you the introduction. All right. So that's it for the, and then we'll move on to the last piece, which is this. This scared the hell out of me because I was like, I didn't know how to do this. And I was just, I was actually just researching for a, a couple of articles because I was going to shill Crypto Trader and iTrust. That's right. Uh, hey, it is what it is. I don't lie to you. So with this one, I found this article and this is what it says. I was like, damn it. This is only for Americans, just so you know. The deadline to file a 2020 individual federal return and paying tax has been extended May 17th. So that's why I've been talking about it on this channel. Like, I think that usually crypto universe does pretty well in uh, right after April 15th because Americans all pay their taxes. I know America is in the whole world. I get it. But we're a kind of a good sized chunk in the crypto uh, sphere. So like people like me, we don't have time to, or don't have the uh, funds to actually put more in. We got to actually take some out and pay our tax. Just how it is. So usually you see at the end of April, May, then things start to really shoot up. So I think that this is going to be great. 
Now, especially with the Coinbase IPO and maybe an ETF uh, gets approved, who knows? Then we start to see May, June, July is going to be just uh, just bananas. So that's what's happening. But this is what was interesting. Um, most states are following the extended federal deadlines and a few have adopted even more extensions. Uh, tax deadline remains. This year, the first estimated tax deadline remains April 15th. Here's what the IRS says. Individuals, including sole proprietors, partners, and S-Corps shareholders generally have to make estimated tax payments if they expect to owe a tax of 1000 bucks or more when the return is filed. Corporations generally have to make estimated tax payments if they expect to owe a tax of 500 bucks or more when their return is filed. So just so you know, reach out to your CPA or to the, the place you do your tax and go, is this true in my state? Do I have to pay right now? And then I can file in May. We I always ask for an extension and file in October, but I still got to pay. So that's just how it is. Everybody's got to pay. So that's what's going on, which leads me to my last points. First of all, if you're struggling with getting everything together for your uh, your taxes, use CryptoTrader.tax, okay? I've used it for two years now. The first year from the time I signed up, got logged in, put all my information in, and sent it to my accountant to review, it took me 30 minutes. This time it took a little bit longer because I had to wait for Voyager's CSV file, which sucked, but I mean, hey, it was it is what it is, and I had to wait, but everything else was done, and she's a god and everything's good. So uh, in the link in the description, there is, in the link in the description, in the description, there's a link, and it's it goes to cryptotrader.tax. You get 20% off for viewers of Dan, on top of, there's a video that explains exactly how to use uh, the information or how to put the information in. A video I did, it's like 15 minutes, very simple. And then lastly, there's also a link to this webpage where you can enter to win a $300 uh, unlimited tax report. Just put your first name and email, enter to win. They draw one every single week. So whichever you want to do, you want to try to win one big one, sure. Or you want to just get things done, just sign up for crypto trade. It's not that much. So that's that part. Lastly, if you're sick of paying taxes like me, which is why I'm probably going to move, uh, take a look at a, a crypto IRA. And uh, what's great about that is that, first of all, if you have a traditional IRA, uh, old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, or a military TSP, if you're about to retire for a military TSP, just so you know, or a 457, you can move it over tax and penalty free to a crypto IRA with iTrust. Look in the description. There's a video I talked about between all the difference, like a Roth, a SEP, and a traditional IRA and how this all works. And then also, just so you know, uh, these are tax-free when you put them in there. And you can actually trade inside your IRA tax-free when it's in there. And then lastly, in quarter two, which is like right now, they're going to be able to allow you to uh, stake Ethereum and Polkadot. And then all the rewards are also tax-free. So that's pretty great. So. Uh, whatever you want to do, link in the description. And that is it for today. So first of all, thanks for sticking with me. I know it was a bit of a rant, a lot of great things going on. It's going to be a fantastic year. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. It helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talked about are time sensitive, like we just talked about. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.